feeling lost and isolated, unable to identify their disease to get treatment or support. People affected by a rare disease have to face these challenges along with their families until the day a diagnosis is made. This diagnosis will completely change their lives because knowledge is power. Orphanet gives this power to patients and all actors of the rare disease ecosystem. It provides a nomenclature, a common language, to identify each disease and offers a wide range of associated information and services. Thanks to Orphanet, patients can find medical experts and contact patient organizations. As for medical professionals, Orphanet gives them the means to understand these rare diseases, to identify their clinical manifestations and offers guidelines so that they can provide better care. Turning to the research community, Orphanet grants access to a complete knowledge base on rare diseases and a detailed list of ongoing clinical trials and research projects. Likewise, companies in the health sector examine the large amounts of data provided by Orphanet. All this information guides their research and development strategies through a better visibility of patient populations and existing orphan drugs. Finally, policymakers are another essential stakeholder in this ecosystem. They use Orphanet to gain insight to direct investments and make organizational choices to support research and healthcare systems. Knowledge is indeed power. Knowledge is the key to ensuring better care for the 300 million people in the world living with a rare disease. Orphanet, know the rare for better care. Okay. So that was a, a short uh, new video in order that you have um, uh, a first overview, and if you can share the, the slides, um, I will start with the with the uh, webinar presentation. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so I will take a control mark on the on the slides. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, Orphanet exists since uh, 1997, so this exactly the same year than Eurodis. We are the dinosaurs in the uh, rare disease ecosystem, and uh, this uh, this uh, uh, slide shows a little bit um, how Orphanet has evolved uh, in the bottom uh, in reflection to the evolution of the policies uh, about rare diseases in Europe. So trying all, uh, always to adapt to the end users uh, needs. Uh, and so we did that when we were 20 years old. And now we are here to, uh, so in, in 2019, when uh, EJPRD started two years uh, ago. Um, so just to give you a flavor on the, the, the history very, very briefly. Um, I don't know why, why it is not going forward. I see you also, Mark, in the... Yeah. Uh, in the so, yeah. So Orphanet is now, after more than 20 years, um, in a leading position in the, um, uh, in the collection of data the integration of this data, the produ production of data as well, as you will see, and the dissemination of added value information and data on rare diseases, but also on all the expert services. Uh, uh, rare rare uh, there is an echo. If you can mute your micros, that will help. Thank you. And uh, so, um, so the added value comes uh, from uh, that all these data uh, and pieces of information are integrated together and are manually curated and uh, for some pieces of the uh, of the of the data they are also submitted to expert advice but the added value comes also uh, uh, from the uh, now global um, uh, coverage of the orphanet network as you will see um, uh, Orphanet is a tool that is uh, used both in the healthcare um, uh, setting, at all, but also on the research setting, and that is also uh, a, a reason to be um, a, a major partner in the EJPRD. 
uh, since uh, several years now, Orphanet is uh, producing a nomenclature and classification for rare diseases that is the, uh, the only specific uh, on the domain of rare diseases and, and so is a, a, a standard producer. Uh, the Orphanet network is now 42 countries around the world. Uh, of course, we have an almost full uh, European coverage, but new countries have uh, joined as full members in dark blue or as contact points in, uh, in yellow. Um, and, and they are contributing uh, in, uh, at, at different uh, levels uh, to the activities of the Orphanet network. So uh, that is um, uh, the, the three main missions of Orphanet, and that is the, how this webinar is organized. So uh, our, our main mission now is to improve the visibility of rare diseases by providing this common language that are the orphacodes, but also our historical mission to provide high quality information on rare diseases and the expertise on rare diseases in the part uh, countries participating to the network. And uh, because of the um, uh, gathering a, a huge amount of heterogeneous data about rare diseases, we now have a knowledge base that contributes to generate knowledge because they are reused uh, in other contexts, together with other pieces of the puzzle, and that uh, that uh, is uh, very useful in the re research setting. So to start with the first block of uh, presentation, uh, we will start by the orphan and nomenclature. This pre presentation is a very summary one because we have already provided um, a, a workshop on the orpha codes. Uh, to the EJPRD partners. So I think that that is available in some, somewhere. Um, for sure, Yanis will put the link in the chat. Uh, uh, and we we will go for a new video uh, on offer codes. And then I will explain a little bit uh, further uh, that. So I stop the control mark. Yep. And Let me share again. For rare diseases to count, we need to count rare diseases. Rare diseases are numerous and diverse, and require specialized management and treatment. The commonly used health information terminologies do not include all rare diseases, and have difficulty grouping them. Use of common terminologies for rare diseases result in inefficient health system planning and unmet patient needs. At a national level, Governments can negotiate improved pricing structures with manufacturers of extremely expensive rare disease drugs when they know the exact number of people needing treatment. Also, as the global pandemic has shown, governments need exact data on which patients are most vulnerable in order to prioritize vaccination. How can they do that if there is no accurate terminology that defines rare disease diagnosis in medical records? Orpha codes is the only terminology that recognizes the more than 6,000 rare diseases and gives each of them a unique, traceable code. Orpha codes terminology is maintained and curated by Orphanet at France's Institute of Health and Medical Research. By using Orpha codes in national health records and patient registries, we will ensure that rare disease data is collected correctly and uniformly. Health data annotated with ORFA codes will make it easier for governments to collect and use precise data about rare disease patients. Doctors could diagnose and treat patients more accurately, and patients can have the correct description of their condition. ORFA codes also allows countries using different languages and terminologies to communicate. If every country in the EU used ORFA codes in their national health record and patient registries, can you imagine how easy it would be to gather data on patients with the same condition in different countries? This could facilitate development of new drugs and treatments and create a European space to share and use accurate information about rare diseases. So how do we make the use of ORFA codes a reality? The European RD Code project helps implementation of ORFA codes terminology at national level. RD Code provides guidelines, standard procedures, as well as technical tools for ORFA codes use. You can find all the information and the ORFA codes help desk at the RD Code Project website. The goal is not far. 
the implementation of ORFA codes in information systems is already recognized as best practice by the rare 2030 Foresight Study, the European Common Semantics Strategy, and the Europe Steering Group on Promotion and Prevention of Non-Communicable Diseases. It is also a required data element for the European Patient Summary, Patient Registries for the European Reference Networks, and European Registries as recommended by the Joint Research Centre. Let's all make a national effort that will help governments, doctors, and patients all around Europe. This effort will provide critical health information to health professionals, will permit analysis of health services, and more importantly, that will increase the visibility of people with a rare disease in Europe and help them on their journey. Okay. Hope you have enjoyed these uh, short videos um, that uh, will be published soon. Uh, so they, they are not already released uh, publicly. So uh, we're kind of uh, avant première. Uh, okay, so uh, I will take the control again yeah. and uh, we will start the, the, the presentation. So um, the orphan net nomenclature, why it is not going around? Uh, yeah, so that is that was the video. So it is um, a medical terminology to uh, uh, gather together all the rare diseases according to the European definition based on the prevalence threshold that is one patient, less than one patient in 2,000 cases. And uh, the orphanet nomenclature is um, a hierarchical classification system in which rare disorders defined clinically as disorders that are clinically uh, homogeneous entities described in at least two independent cases. These disorders can be grouped in groups and categories going up to the a systemic, um, uh, so the system anomaly that is more or less a medical specialty, um, but also uh, divided further into subtypes that could be etiological subtypes, for instance, by, by genes or clinical subtypes uh, because of uh, early onset or, or a late onset presentation and so on and so forth. So having adopted a common definition of what a rare disease is, we can count the, uh, how many rare disorders are there, and that is why we count more than 6,000 uh, rare disorders. Of course, that is an evolving figure because new disorders are, are described uh, all the time, but others are merged together uh, because of the um, uh, evolution of knowledge. Uh, but the whole, uh, the whole system is around 10,000 concepts. And that is uh, uh, so very comprehensive because it's maintained over the time, through a literature a review and collaboration with the European Reference Networks. It is standardized according to procedures, interoperable, uh, I will explain you uh, how, versioned, computable, and uh, free because it is uh, under the CC BY 4.0 license. So it is ready to use. Um, having this nomenclature allowed us to make some exploitation that, uh, for instance, uh, using the orphanet um, knowledge base on epidemiological data uh, to describe uh, how these diseases are distributed and, and, and to have the first uh, conservative estimation of the overall uh, point prevalence uh, in, in all over the world. So ended up with a population of rare disease patients that is bigger than the United States. So it allowed us also to characterize the rare disease patient population. So we, we see that up to 88% of uh, rare diseases affect exclusively or can affect ch children. And that uh, two thirds more or less are genetic in origin. So we have one third that is not. Um, we have 80% of what diseases that are better described as prevalence, but 14% 14 of diseases that are better described by incidence, like rare cancers, rare infections, or rare intoxications. Uh, 
What is uh, what is in the OFA net nomenclature? So we have the OFA code that is a, a unique identifier that is stable on time uh, over the time, uh, a preferred term, and as many synonyms as necessary in each of the um, uh, language versions, and a definition that is uh, embedded in the nomenclature in order to facilitate the identification of the right code uh, by, uh, by coders. Um, the nomenclature is aligned with other terminologies that are used in, in, in health, but also in research. And these uh, mappings or matchings are uh, uh, qualified as exact or so the, to, to qualify the level of proximity uh, between two concepts in two different terminologies. And that are, are the, the current coverage figures. So uh, the cardinality is from orphanet nomenclature to the target nomenclature, but that allows for semantic interoperability between system that are, systems that are using uh, different terminologies. So um, the, the nomenclature is available uh, in different uh, formats, and that I, uh, at that stage, I will hand over to Mark that will explain you how to yeah. so, so uh, download very, this nomenclature. <laughs> very briefly for the sake of time. I mean, um, obviously you could use the Orphanet website to have all the information around specific concepts. But if you would like to download, for instance, um, a more or less large data sets uh, about the nomenclature itself, you could go to the orphadata.org platform, which is um, a platform that we made in back in 2011. And on that platform, you will find different uh, data sets uh, in XML format or JSON format, and you could download things. So, yeah, that, for instance, for the nomenclature and classification of rare disease, you have a dedicated space on the orphanet website um, with both the orphanet nomenclature files for coding, which is a specific part developed in the context of the air decode project, as you've seen in the videos. So uh, for those kind of files, the update is made annually because of the need of for stability as for this project. But for the, the rest of the different files, it's uh, updated on a monthly basis or every month. Um, every first of the month, you have a release of the latest version of the files, and you will uh, have the ability to download on your uh, own PC for your own purpose. Uh, so such kind of large data set, including the radices with all the mappings, all the terminologies, and also the classification, the epidemiological information, the HPO sign annotated with, and, and so on. So that it's it's quite large. Um, so back on that, we we, we pr provide the information uh, through this XML format which is really useful and was asked for in back in days but we also provide nowadays some JSON format on that um, the monthly version are also available on github if you would like to have uh, let's say a tracking system to track um, changes between different versions of, of files it's doable through the the github repository as well this same process uh, by the key you have the, the same files both on github and uh, offerdata.org about for the monthly version and annual version uh, which uh, as I've already mentioned, is meant only for the early code project then. Um, back to the uh, early code things, we also provide a dedicated API, so application program interface, um, which is from technical point of view, um, uh, helping tools to help to to, in, to implement uh, your, in your system, your own system, um, the queries around different concepts about ent clinical entities. So we have been developed this project in the context of the early code and provide an API following the open API specification. So basically you have a set of, let's say, get uh, that allows you to grab information uh, by using different uh, queries and, and codes to have this information. But this is based on the annual version of the early code uh, project and we also have been uh, able to develop based on the API uh, dedicated tools to help the coding um, part of things let's say in order to let users to have a better understanding of the nomenclature and visualization of classification so uh, you could go to the website here and you could uh, search by any terms in any languages available and then you also have a representation a graphical representation to play with for instance you can, um, let's say, uh, use the graph representation to go on upper level or or, or uh, lower level of the 
system and you also able to download information to export information regarding uh, several concepts in that. So uh, I, I will display the, later on the links on the chat as well, but uh, you could play with these uh, tools to have a look when you would like to, to do afterwards. Um, so I'll let the floor back to Anna now. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. So, uh, because there are uh, not no, no questions yet, and you are invited to post your questions in the chat, I will go forward uh, with the information services. That is uh, the second part of this webinar uh, related to the mission of providing high quality information on rare diseases and expertise. So that is the historical mission of Ofanet. Uh, uh, and that is um, mostly released through the Orphanet website. This Orphanet website, the, uh, of uh, which you see the, the, the landing page here, is, uh, is organized into uh, sections uh, that you can easily consult uh, from the front page, but also opening the uh, burger menu uh, that is present uh, at, uh, all the time uh, in the, um, uh, during your navigation and that provides you with more granular details on the kinds of information that are present in the Orphanet website. But you see that you have information on, the, on diseases, on orphan drugs, on patient organizations, on um, uh, 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 test uh, laboratories, uh, test and laboratories, expert centers and of course ERNs but also research-related activities on a, a directory of professionals uh, in the rare disease setting. Some metrics that are the, the statistics for the 2020, uh, for 2020, and we have 20, more than 20 million visitors during the, the year uh, from all parts of, uh, of the world. Um, the, our users are for a, a half, more or less a half, um, health professionals that are not specialists on rare diseases and uh, 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 the important part of patients, families and uh, organizations and an increasing part of students and that is from the, our satisfaction survey so it is representative of people that answered the, the, the survey of course and not of the 20 million. Um, okay so uh, in Orphanet you have summaries for uh, each one of the rare disease, either a definition, either a, a full summary. And this is produced in English and translated in many other languages, much more than the languages of Orphanet, that is a, a multilingual um, a website. And these summaries from some time uh, on are now uh, co-produced and, and, uh, and uh, revised uh, with ERNs. So that is an increasing collaboration we are uh, proud uh, of. Um, we have also, as I said before, the expert resources catalog. So encompassing professionals, patient organizations, expert centers, and so on and so forth. So you have some metrics here. And uh, of course, we have a, a, a cartographical uh, a view of uh, the ERNs with a list of the ERNs and their composition. And thanks to the ERICA project, that will be enlarged to the activities that are uh, run by ERNs, including um, uh, clinical trials, research projects, uh, clinical observation and research project, and clinical practice guidelines. We annotate rare diseases with their phenotypes. So by describing each disease, the population of patients with HPO terms, and adding uh, annotations on the frequency, but also some other kinds of annotations, for instance, when the clinical uh, sign or symptoms is part of the clinical, the diagnostic criteria of, uh, for, for a given disease, that is also marked up. Uh, and that is uh, now uh, uh, constituted a huge volume, uh, and Mark will explain uh, later on how it is exploitable. We also per perform um, uh, a database of genetic information by annotating the kind of relationship between a gene and a disease. So uh, to, um, uh, to document if it is a causative mutation, loss of, of function, gain of function, or uh, if it is a susceptibility factor or constitutes a major, major role in the phenotype for the chromosomal anomaly, for instance. Um, 
uh, something that is quite original is the uh, annotation of diseases, uh, a subset of them with their functional consequences uh, using the uh, ICF, so International Classification of Functioning, uh, derived thesaurus, and providing information on the disabilities, so the, conse the consequences of rare diseases um, for each one of the, 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 the subset of diseases, uh, according to the temporality, so permanent or progressive, sporadic, so episodic, and so on, um, the frequency and the severity. And that is being used in the ERICA project to, um, uh, as the basis for mapping instruments of quality of life, uh, clinical uh, outcome assessment measures, uh, including PCOMs, P uh, PROMs, and so on and so forth, uh, in order to set a database of um, existing instruments that could be usable in the rare disease setting without uh, redeveloping specific instruments for um, rare diseases, and that will be validated by the ERNs. Other texts that are disseminated through the uh, website are uh, emergency guidelines that are produced uh, produced by orphanetic collaboration with um, experts and uh, emergency practitioners, uh, but also we are dis disseminating des texts that are produced by others for which we uh, have a quality assessment process that can be in multiple languages. So in order that we can uh, make a selection of high quality articles that, that, uh, that uh, are ho highly informative uh, for uh, practitioners, for the general public, or for the social sector. And we have a newsletter in English and translations and adaptations in French and Italy, in Italian, to which you can su subscribe to have uh, the news about, uh, so the scientific news, but also the political news, and in the international um, uh, newsletter, a uh, special section for uh, ERN uh, ERN news. Okay, so um, I will stop here for a moment, Tala. I turn to you to know if you have uh, questions for the moment. Otherwise, we will continue and take the questions at the end. So we don't have any questions in the chat, but um, feel free to throw any uh, questions. We will uh, save a few minutes for that. If not, we can move on and then we can have a final round of questions. Okay. That. Okay. Uh, thank you, Tala. So either everybody is very shy, I, uh, or we are very clear. So I prefer the second option. So we will go to the last part of the presentation, or almost the last one. That is the um, uh, so gathering all that the nomenclature and all the data uh, and, and data elements that uh, I presented before as uh, as being done for information purposes. We have now a, a, a consistent knowledge base for rare diseases in which all the elements are connected to the rare disease nomenclature and classification system. So we have epidemiological data, genetic data, data on, uh, on the age of onset, on the inheritance, but also uh, orphan designations and drugs, the disability facts and the HPO, uh, so phenotypes, the alignments with other uh, nomenclatures, the textual information, and the catalog of uh, expert resources center on the patient or a research center. So that is roughly the, the, the content of the knowledge base. As I said before, the added value comes uh, from the fact that there are uh, standardized procedures to, um, uh, to feed this knowledge base. Uh, that that uh, that follow four steps. That is the survey of the of the sources, uh, the the production of the of uh, the object in the in this knowledge base, whatever the uh, whatever the the registration they write in the annotation, and then a validation that depends on the the type of data and a quality control. So. Um, uh, these uh, data uh, are uh, not only uh, for information on the website, but for reuse in ORFA data. And here I hand over again to Mark. 
Yeah, sure. Just to mention the fact that most of the um, data sets are still also available on the offerdata.org platform. Uh, as you've seen on the screen, there is uh, they are heavily used in a sense because you have a lot of users trying to um, use and, and download different uh, information or getting, for instance, the classification, uh, uh, the nomenclature of information and so on. I also need to mention the fact that some parts of the offerdata.org are not freely available, meaning by that, that for instance, if you would like to to download information about the services, I mean, by the resources that are available, such as the research project, registries, biobank information, and so on. This is uh, doable, but under a data transfer agreement, then, or even uh, for fee if you are a private company. Um, just to be quick on that, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Uh, the audience of the website uh, offerdata.org is also something to consider. This is a bit different than the Orphanet website itself. Uh, as you've seen on, on the screen, um, actually, there is a lot of users coming from the US, uh, even used by, by our um, US colleagues to, to, the, to, to, to download all the files and to process all the content for their own purpose, um, more than, than in Europe. Uh, so each year, we have an increasing, let's say, usage of the offerdata.org platform by our US uh, colleagues. So that's something to consider and very interesting regarding the audience of the website itself, the Offernet website itself. Um, Back to that, we we try to develop different kind of services around the knowledge base because uh, obviously the website, the Orphanet website, is most known and and let's say the, the the historical usage of the of the knowledge base uh, back in in the 20 uh, um, years. And since we try to develop different kind of services uh, around this Orphanet knowledge base, based on the uh, fact that we try to uh, let the user have their own use of uh, the data sets. Uh, Firstly, with the offerdata.org platform, but then also with the development of several API and the ontologies. I need also to mention that. Um, I need also to mention the fact that uh, since a few years now, uh, the offerdata.org um, platform, and especially all the content around the nomenclature, is an Elixir core data resources. So Elixir, it's one of the biggest, uh, let's say, technical infrastructure, bioinformatic infrastructure around Europe uh, for different, uh, let's say, uh, concept or Let's say usage because it, it's come from the uh, metagenomics to uh, plants to human uh, information, human data. So it's quite wide in terms of usage, but there is very few core resources, and Offer Data is one of them. Is the only and first uh, French core data resource uh, for this Elixir platform. Um, and also we develop different services that are embedded in other, let's say, contexts. So for instance, the ontology, I will say a few words later on, are also available on a search portal from the Urban Bioinformatic Institute and so on. So you can also use uh, the ontology based on this kind of bioinformatic tools. So everything is really developed around, around this uh, off-net knowledge base. So once again, you could have an access to offerdata.org, especially if you would like to download, for instance, uh, as well, the ontologies. Uh, so back on that, you also have the ability to have a fair data point uh, to allow you to, to access uh, and to have a proper description of the content uh, with both the catalog description information and the repository information uh, in a fair, uh, so meaning by, by that, that we are compliant with the fair principles, the findability, accessible, uh, interoperability, resume, principles um, so there is a further point to access the data set uh, and we are currently under the process to develop as well a dedicated API for the offer data uh, website content. Uh, so um, the first API was for the radical project. Uh, the second round uh, of API will be uh, for the offerdata.org content. So mm, that, that means that uh, even if you would like to use it directly and not download and process yourself the files, it will be um, uh, doable to use the API to get information around concept by using this kind of API. Uh, afterwards. So in few months, we hope that we will able to release uh, this uh, version of Offer Data uh, API. 
for the ontology, basically we provide two ontology which are really important. The first one is obviously the orphanage radisi ontology. Hordo uh, was developed jointly with Orphanet and the EBI, the Open Bioinformatics Institute, back in the day, um, and we provide this information, uh, for instance, in the bio portal, uh, which is a well-known repository of uh, several ontologies in the domain of, of biology and human um, uh, data. So we are the Let's say putting all the information in BioPortal uh, twice a year, uh, also with all the translation version of translated version of the Orphanet uh, Radis ontology. But uh, as we have seen during the presentation, we use HPO10, the human phenotype ontology, to annotate clinical entities within the knowledge base. And this is also available through the files in Orphanet.org, but also in the format of uh, a dedicated uh, ontological model. Module. So basically merging the both the human phenotype ontology and the orphanage radius ontology and could perform queries on that. So it's also downloadable available on the orphanedata.org website. And you could also uh, have a look on the ontology by using the ontology lookup service at the EBI. So we also part of that uh, aspect. So back on that, we also, in the context of DGP, obviously trying to develop new services uh, to build the, um, the, um, the virtual platform. So for instance, there is a schema here um, to show you the one of the first version of what we have uh, been uh, doing with our colleagues from the BBMRI and other uh, people involved in the process of the query builder work focus. And, and we try to develop uh, um, a dedicated system, ecosystem of API, letting each other, uh, querying each other, and uh, also uh, having the ability to develop a specific access point to that. So I think in the uh, next coming months, you will uh, have more information and you, uh, you probably have the ability to play with the, the interface and, and the access to, to this kind of thing. But it's really um, based also on the content made uh, on Orphanet registries and biobanks information. So it's really based on the Orphanet knowledge base uh, as well for the mapping system that allows you to play with, for instance, different terminologies in order to ease the process of querying each other resources. Um, so back to Anna now for the last version, last part of the presentation about partnerships and projects. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, so I will I will continue because uh, it seems that there are a few questions, but that we will take them all um, at the end because we are almost uh, almost done with the presentation. So um, I hope that we have now. Um, an overview on what Orphanet is for, uh, the nomenclature, the information, uh, the uh, services uh, on the Orphanet web website, but also the re reusability of all the data on Orpha data and through the ontologies. So, um, based on, on this, uh, let's say, uh, panoptic. Um, uh, uh, coverage uh, the, the, uh, that the Orphanet knowledge base has. Uh, Orphanet is now, uh, why is this not going forward? Yeah, it's, uh, it's Orphanet is now um, the most and most uh, collaborate, uh, collaborating with uh, ERNs uh, because now um, uh, the expertise since the ERNs are, are there uh, five years ago is very well organized in, in Europe, and we have this this uh, privilege in Europe. As uh, and uh, Orphanet is also a, a network uh, uh, on the, the databasing, classification, and standardizing uh, information. So it is natural that we uh, mutualize uh, the efforts, and that uh, Orphanet rely uh, relies the more and more on the expertise uh, of uh, European reference networks. And uh, we have now some, some very, very, very nice collaborations achieved, uh, others uh, ongoing, both on improving the nomenclature and on improving the information. Uh, uh, and, uh, and also uh, now the, the ERICA project in which um, the information that is uh, present in the orphanage database and that pertains to uh, ERNs will be uh, identified and identifiable through Orphanet 
but also through ERICA in a dedicated ERICA platform for the research activities of uh, the European Reference Network uh, networks. So Ofanet is collaborating with the main terminology producers in order to increase the interoperability. Uh, Ofanet is so has uh, or, or is because the project ends at the end of the year. Uh, coordinating the article project so that is an implementation project of the OFA codes in four European countries and setting new uh, recommendations for further implementation scaling up to other countries in the future and that will come in the next uh, OFANET uh, project, European project. But by doing that we are collaborating in two major projects that are cross health in which the specifications of a common format for the electronic health records in Europe is being set up, as well as a special um, products like the patient summary that allows for um, translating the, the most important um, uh, patient summary pieces uh, for unplanned care abroad. So it's, it's a continuity of care instrument and the TEDAS joint action that is prefiguring the, um, uh, the recommendations for the European health data space. But also Fanet is, uh, uh, of course, involved in major research uh, in the ABRS, so the, the GoFair network uh, that is an implementation of the uh, ready system, uh, GoFair that is an implementation um, case for uh, GoFair. Uh, the Solvardi project in which we are trying to exploit the ontologies in order to um, uh, to play with the phenotypic similarities to to try to to help solving unsolved cases and of course the EJPID in which often it plays a big role and uh, uh, and as Mark explained. Um, Ofanet will be uh, part uh, of the, the, the virtual platform that is in, in development. So uh, why all that? Uh, is, it is because we really need to have a standardized data ecosystem for rare diseases in Europe in all the instances in which patient, uh, rare disease patient data are, um, uh, are collected. Uh, and, and for that, we need to promote the, the standards that are the, the best standards for uh, um, rare diseases. So OFA codes are one of them. Uh, there are, of course, uh, others and HPO and, and all the standards that we are using in the, in the OFA knowledge base. But the OFA knowledge base is kind of um, putting all these standards together in a, in a way that is reusable and that can be a reference set. Of, uh, of data in, in these uh, data um, uh, spaces and, and repositories. Uh, and uh, the, the last slide is what we are, uh, that we, what we will start to do from next year on, that is, um, that is uh, to take advantage of the well-developed and mature orphanet network that has hubs uh, or nodes in each country to, uh, uh, to provide national support for the OFAD codes implementation in hospitals that are hosting a European reference networks, because we, what we learned from our code is that we need to have local support in local language, uh, really the, the proximity uh, support, and for that the OFANET network will be scaled up in order that uh, they constitute OFANET nomenclature hubs at the national level in order that at the end we can produce data, countries can produce data uh, on rare diseases that can be shared at the European level and in the European health data space or by other means. I think that is my last presentation. Well, that I will I will squeeze this one because I think that you, you have understood these main messages that is often it is for care but also for research and to generate evidence around uh, rare disease uh, data.